Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm checking out the Warwick Firearms WFA1 rifle. Now guys, if you've been following me for some time now, you'd know that a couple of years ago, you know, I swore black and blue that I'd never review one of these out of principle. And uh, why I said that is because, you know, I was originally approached by Warwick Firearms and asked to review one of these, um, you know, many years ago. I mean, I, this was in uh, back in uh, 2015 when I first had a look at them at the SSAA um, uh, SHOT Show in Brisbane. And uh, anyhow, I'd followed up several times. I agreed to do it, uh, followed up several times to make the arrangements. And um, I was always promised that someone would contact me to uh, get that sorted and nothing ever happened. And, uh, you know, after a good handful of times of doing that over the space of a number of months, you do sort of get sick of it and you think, well, hang on a minute here. I'm promoting a <laughs> product for someone. They've asked me to uh, review it. However, um, you know, you're basically just getting the cold shoulder and false promises. But anyhow, guys, look, Scott Warwick is a top fella. He came up to me uh, at the last SSAA SHOT Show and um, yeah, I apologised saying that he was never told any of these messages and um, asked me if I would uh, reconsider and review one. And I happily said, well, look, you know, I'm more than happy to accept the apology there um, and no problem, more than happy to review one. However, the last two years, there's been no contact. So, um, you know, there was still nothing ever arranged there, guys. So, um, you know, nothing against any of them personally. You guys know I call it and say it exactly how it is. And that's the reason behind why it's taken me so long to actually review one of these. So what I've got here is actually a friend's one. And uh, he offered it to me and I thought to myself, look, why not? Um, I'm pretty keen to actually shoot one of them. I've handled them back in 2015, but never actually got to shoot one. So I thought, well, let's give it a review because I've had enough of you ask me for a review on this rifle. Um, so anyhow, we thought we'd give it the good once over. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and uh, clear it. Now we've got a left hand uh, cocking handle here. This is uh, how it comes standard so it does lock back you know from there and then you do have a release um, little lever here okay so all you need to do just pull down and it'll close from there so let's start off with a run by on it so as you can see it's really got that look of the ar-15 you know anyone who's familiar with an ar-15 when you pick it up it points very similar um, however there's a couple of key differences that obviously you know um, make it obvious that it's not an AR. So um, the biggest thing is obviously the thickness here of the upper receiver. Like when everything sits down here, you can see here the upper is not a standard AR upper, just to shape everything there. So in other words, you can't just get a standard AR upper and throw it on this lower. It's not going to work. So uh, let's have a look closer at specs. The one I've got here is in 300 blackout. Okay, you can get them in uh, 223. However, this one's 300 blackout, as I say. Um, 14, 16, or 20 inch barrel. The 20 inch barrel is limited to the 223, I believe, and 14 and 16 inch, you know, for the 300 blackout. Weight wise, it really depends on the configuration you get because um, not only can you get different barrel lengths, there's also different lengths you know, of the upper here. Now there's a short and long. Now I've got the short version here. The long one is just a couple of inches um, more. So you're looking at about three and a half kilos or 7.7 .7 pounds all up. Now it comes standard just with a uh, 10 round uh, basic AR mag, okay? There's nothing fancy about that whatsoever. So if you want to use, you know, some P mags or you have any other sort of favorite AR type mag, then it'll fit, no dramas there whatsoever. So having a look at the barrel, I've got the 14 inch barrel here. It comes with an A2 uh, flash hider. So if you've got, you know, like different flash hiders or muzzle brakes that you want to put on it, then, you know, you can do so. The handguard here is, it's all one piece, okay? So unfortunately you can't, you know, just put your favorite AR handguard on. It is just this one piece. If you want more Picatinny rail, then go for the longer version, you know, and it'll give you some more real estate up front there. Now I've got the Hogue Finger Groove um, AR grip on this one. I mean, you know, most people know that I really like the Hogue stuff. So I replaced just the standard A2 grip, you know, with that. Now the trigger is just a standard single stage AR trigger. Um, this one here breaks really nice and light at three pounds. So, um, you know, pretty happy with that. At the back here, we've got uh, just a standard commercial, uh, sorry, mil-spec uh, buffer tube. 
Um, we've got the um, Magpul CTR stock on the back. So, you know, you can obviously change that. Um, whatever stock you want to put on it um, that's compatible with an AR, you can do it. Now, the color of this one here, when I first put the post there, uh, you know, online, I know a lot of people said, geez, it's worn. Well, yeah, it's called battle worn. That is the color of it. So it's meant to look like this, okay? So you can get it in different colors. Um, it comes standard as, as silver, you know, from Warwick Firearms, but you can get them in flat dark earth, uh, desert sand, and also um, olive drab. So there's a few different options there as well. Okay, so I just wanted to show you it broken down, guys. So this is the actual bolt carrier. So as you can see, it's nothing like a standard AR bolt carrier. So, you know, you just don't have that compatibility and you definitely can't convert it. Now we've got a very uh, similar looking uh, AR bolt here. So uh, by looking at it, I'd imagine that the um, ejector and the extractor is compatible with any other AR-15 uh, bolt. But obviously you've got no gas rings because it's not semi-automatic. Firing pin looks very standard. The um, actual uh, bolt knob off the uh, cocking handle, that's obviously unique. And then down here, we've got a very uh, different looking uh, cam pin equivalent. And then we've got the firing pin retaining pin. And then obviously we've got uh, dual uh, rods and springs there, you know, to operate that uh, spring assisted action. Okay, so I'll run through how the action actually works. Now, with the uh, cocking handle, obviously, after you fire, just pull it back and let it go forward. That's it. Let it go forward, fire, pull back, let it go forward. Fire, pull back, let it go forward. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. Um, you can actually uh, pay extra and you can get a uh, right-hand side cocking handle, but me being right-handed, I mean, obviously, I want my right hand, um, you know, on the actual uh, pistol grip and then I'll manipulate my left hand from the handguard back to uh, manipulate the action from there. Okay, so on top here, I've got the Leupold VXR 1.25 to 4 by 20 scope. This is the one with the Pigplex reticle. So I thought that'd be uh, perfect for, you know, 300 blackout in this configuration, especially because I really doubt I'll be, you know, shooting over about that um, 125 yards anyway. So anyhow, guys, let's get out on the farm now, put some rounds downrange and see how it all performs. All right, guys, let's run through the ammo that we're going to use today. So we're going to start off with the Outback ammo loaded with 125 grain match king. Then we've got um, some Remington AccuTip here with the 125 grain AccuTip round. Then we'll move to the Hornady loaded with the 110 grain VMAX. Then we've got some Cellier and Bellet, and that's loaded with 147 grain uh, full metal jacket. And then last of all, we've got some Winchester loaded with the 150 grain um, extreme point projectile. So anyhow, guys, we've got a target down there uh, at 100. So we'll just see how we go shooting five shot groups and just see if it takes a preference uh, for any of these ammos.
first of all was the actual um, outback ammo and that was pretty good we had four shots nicely in there but a fifth so that's blown right out to about uh, 2.7 inches then we uh, came down uh, to the Remington uh, AccuTip okay so one two three four five there so that's come in a little bit and we're at about two inches there then when we uh, shot the 110 grain VMAX from Hornady, now my point of aim was here, but you know the impact was well off to the left there. So we got one, two, three, four, five. That's going to come down a little bit more to 1.6 inches. Then we go up to the uh, cellular and bellet. Now um, I'm pretty happy with that. Like I say, there is guesswork, and using that uh, pigplex um, <laughs> reticle there from Loophole. You know, the bar just covers all of this here. So, you know, you do have to uh, guess it as much as you can to, you know, be right on. So we've got about 2.3 inches there. Then we come down uh, to the last ammo, which is the Winchester. Now my point of aim was here. The point of impact was over here. So there's two ammos, the Hornady and the Winchester that it throws way to the left compared to the other ammo. So we got one, two, three, four, five there, and same sort of story. Uh, you know, we're out at three inches there, so. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up my final thoughts on the Warwick Arms WFA1 rifle. Now, there's a lot to like about the rifle. You know, you've pretty much got like a straight pull AR. Um, you know, you've got the choice there of putting different uh, flash hiders, muzzle brakes on. You've got the compatibility with AR magazines. You've also got, you know, different AR stocks, grips, even triggers. Um, yeah, there's just so much that you can put on this to customize it to your liking. As I said, you know, in the intro, they obviously, uh, you know, make different barrel lengths for different purposes. So if you want to, you know, go for perhaps a little bit more uh, accuracy out at long range and you want a longer barrel to keep up that feet per second of the uh, projectile, then you can go down that route. Or like this, you can have a short barrel that's great for just up to the shoulder, you know, moving around in the scrub and controlling feral pests. So overall, guys, I would have liked to have seen more accuracy. Um, you know, a bit disappointed in that. I mean, I have to be honest here. It's me with a four power scope. So, um, but still, I really would have thought the, the shots would have been a lot tighter at 100 than what they were, especially when you're paying about $3,000 for a rifle. But in saying that, you know, using this uh, scope, it does have a very thick crosshair at uh, 50 yards you know i'm shooting half inch groups with it so obviously there is a decent amount of accuracy with the rifle so i'm pretty uh, confident if i put a uh, better 
magnification scope or higher magnification scope on here it would shoot a lot better for me but that's just not my purpose you know as you've seen here running around like just shooting at the gongs between sort of 7500 yards you know no problem it's just hitting it every single time so you know it would be fantastic for out in the scrub controlling feral pests now, uh, one thing I will mention, guys, you know, the price of this being $3,000, you've got to be honest with yourself. Are you going to use it for what its purpose is? Um, you know, because you're up there in, you know, high-end Seiko and shoots uh, territory. So, you know, if you want a firearm where you're just going to fire a few rounds at the range and you want to, you know, shoot some targets and, and that's about it, um, and you're not really going to go out after feral pests where you need that, I suppose a little bit higher capacity magazine and the quick reload then you've really got to make the decision and be honest with yourself whether you'd go for something like this or pay the money and just get a really schmick nice looking uh, bolt action like Anschutz or Seiko so that's just something to consider but for what it is um, I see it as two complete different purposes and if your purpose is going out and getting feral pests and running around just having a bit of fun like I've had today then you know this is well worth a look at um, you know I didn't have obviously any jams or problems with it it just worked perfectly and it's great to see an Australian manufactured product, you know, doing well. All right, guys, uh, we'll leave the review at that. Hope you really enjoyed watching it. So till next time, we'll catch you then.